probably best for students to go a little bit deeper into one of our programs to talk in specific about what it's like to be in a developed country in a place where you really have very little access to information. And a mobile phone, at best, is going to be your resource, your primary pipeline to get information for your remote rural spot. So I'm going to tell you a bit about our mobile health program that is currently underway in Ghana. Try to take you virtually to Ghana. We're up in the very northern part of, right on the Burkina Faso border. Uh, to properly do this, we probably have to turn off the air conditioning, then it gets about 90 degrees and 90 percent humidity in here. And have all of you spend pretty much the entire day in the field planting cassava, harvesting cassava, or dodging a massive rainstorm because it gets really wet. Most people in this area have very, very little access to either health information or health resources. If you are a family or a woman who is in this area and you need to get health care, you go to a clinic. I'm just hit the next slide here. And the Ghana Health Service has a network of these very, very small community health clinics. This is about the nicest one you'll see. Inside there's one room off on the side where the nurse lives. Uh, they have two or three nurses that can live in these compounds. Sometimes there's a nurse midwife that will work it through. And uh, there's another room that's sort of an office or area where people can sort of come in and be greeted by the nurse. And at best, there's a very, very small examination room. Oftentimes, that examination room just has a table and is used for storage, grain supplies, other supplies that they have to have. The next slide you see is sort of the other end of the extreme for the health clinics where they'll have a dilapidated leaking roof, a uh, very, very rundown facility. But this really is as good as it gets for receiving health care at the local government. With our program, we're trying to figure out how we can use mobile phones to get pregnant women better access to information. So we're trying to improve both the quality and the quantity of the neonatal care that they receive. Most women in this area will, at the best, get maybe two to three antenatal care visits during the course of their pregnancy. You really should have four or five spread evenly up throughout the course of your pregnancy. When you get one at the end of your pregnancy, you just receive a immunization booklet for your impending child. It really doesn't do a whole lot for maintaining a healthy pregnancy. So you can hit the next slide. The women will come to these health clinics either during their pregnancy or after pregnancy to receive health care. Oftentimes the immunizations happen right out on the front porch here, uh, but there are oftentimes organized immunization days which people are made aware of through sometimes a truck driving through and announcing on a lot of people in front of the immunization. So healthcare is very, very grassroots and driven by people who really uh, are dedicated to the others. These nurses have not come to rural areas, they've gone to school and have decided to come out and work in these rural areas. But the pregnant parents or the pregnant women really don't seek care very frequently. They're very, very passive in the care that they want to see. And oftentimes the nurses, frankly, aren't very active in going on seeking patients. It's really, really stinking hot. And it's much easier to hang out in the shade of your clinic than to go out and try to literally meet the bushes and try to find people who are in need of care. So we set out with this goal of trying to get people much more access to health information. And we started off by just talking with lots and lots of pregnant women, literally under a mango tree, shady spot in the village. And we spent part of the time trying to understand what the, their information needs were. We set up a program we called the Pregnancy Question Box, where we would go up to a person, either a pregnant woman or a village elder, and say, what question do you have about pregnancy? Literally hand them a mobile phone. And there was a nurse on the other end of the phone who would answer the call and ask the questions that they have. And from that very brief glimpse into the questions that people are asking, we've got a good sense as to the huge, huge information gaps that exist here. People, for example, really didn't have a concept of how pregnant they were. We think of pregnancy in the developed world is how many weeks pregnant are you? Quite often people didn't understand what a week was. We had to very quickly change our language and say, well, how many market days has it been since your last period, for example? And then people start thinking in terms of how far along their pregnancy they were. Similarly, we found there were huge myths that really were very, very pervasive that had an adverse effect on someone's pregnancy. For example, you should eat dirt to get minerals, or you should not be eating meat because if you eat meat, your baby will get a taste for meat and become a thief when it grows up. And so we found that there was this very, very complex 
information system that we need to provide for people. We thought we could do that via mobile phones. So we started a program uh, that is targeted both at the pregnant parents, we refer to them as pregnant parents because oftentimes it's not the pregnant mother who has access to the mobile phone. It might be the male in the household who has the phone, or perhaps a uh, one person in the community that they live in will have access to the phone. And so we specifically thought about the types of information we can deliver over mobile phones to those pregnant parents. Up to the next slide. We developed a program that we call the Mobile Midway. And these are some posters that go up in the clinics that advertise the system. Uh, you'll notice that the posters are in English, and that's a very, very deliberate decision on our part. There are a number of different languages that are spoken in Ghana. But English tends to be the common denominator in the health clinics for communicating with people with very, very simple health information. And what someone can do is they can register with their mobile phone to receive information. We have them call up, they talk to a real person on the phone because we want to lower the technology barriers as much as we possibly can. We find out roughly how long they are in their pregnancy, where they live so we know where their nearest health clinic is, whether or not they have a language preference, what time they would like to receive messages, and we will then send them messages on a periodic basis. So roughly three times a week, the mobile phone will either deliver a text message, if they have selected a text message, or uh, in the vast majority of the cases, we're sending messages via voice because of you know, some literacy challenges. And those messages will come to the phone, and if someone's not there to answer the phone, they can call them the system and retrieve the messages later. And we'll give them information about their pregnancy. So at five weeks, for example, we start talking about the importance of nutrition. Later on in the pregnancy, we start talking about the importance of taking antimalarial drugs. Um, other vaccinations such as tetanus. But as their pregnancy nears its completion, we start talking about the importance of going to health clinics uh, and having your delivery at the health clinic as opposed to at home. And through these messages, really try to reinforce that antenatal care should be sought throughout the course of the entire pregnancy. So if you hit the next slide, the other piece that we're trying to tackle is on the nurse side. So these are some of the healthcare workers that work in some of these community health compounds. And they have this incredibly onerous data burden on top of the healthcare burden that they have, or healthcare provision burden that they have. So we asked these two nurses to assemble all the registers that they have to use on a regular basis. And they stack them up here on the desk. So they've got one register for childhood immunizations, another register for maternal immunizations, another register for people who walk in the door uh, with a wound, another register for people who are coming in for antenatal care, another register for births, etc. And uh, these women at the end of every month have to take all the information from these registers and assemble it into this massive grid that goes back up to the Ghana Health Service. Hit the next slide. So it's broken out into, you can't quite see here, about 76 different diseases or reasons that people have come into the clinic. And the columns are by gender in roughly five year age. <coughs> so they spend literally three or four days at the end of every month tallying the number of 18 to 23 year old females that had malaria and putting the early thoughts there, and then they sort of do that for every disease and their age bracket. And the part of me that's the like, dies a little bit every time I think of somebody to think about this because it's something that's been so easily be handled by a computer system. So what we've decided to do is to give the nurses tools that are also mobile phone based. And they're able to use fairly simple mobile phones to enter information about patients who come into the clinic. So each patient gets one of these little identification cards. Uh, you can get one if you are registering for the mobile midwife service or if you are not pregnant. And you then have an ID number. And the nurse can then associate that ID number with the type of care that you receive when you walk into the door. So a pregnant woman comes in and she will receive care that gets entered, or entered on the mobile phone. A child with malaria comes in that gets entered on the mobile phone. So we hope by doing this that we take these nurses out of the business of tabulating the end of the month so they can focus their care on their time and actually providing care. And we've actually connected these two systems so that the pregnant women can receive more targeted messages. For example, at you know, roughly 22 or 24 weeks, someone should have received their second tetanus shot. So we'll send them a message that says, you should receive your second tetanus shot about now, please go to the health clinic and receive it. Well, if they do go to the health clinic, the nurse will enter that encounter on the mobile phone and the system says, okay, that person's gotten their second tetanus shot. But if a certain number of weeks has gone by and we see in our electronic medical record that someone has not received their second tetanus shot, we can start sending a more targeted health message to both the nurse 
as well as the pregnant parent. So the pregnant parent receives a message that says, if you missed your tetanus shot, you should go to the clinic now. The nurse receives a message that says, there's a woman in your village or in your catchment area who is in need of her second pregnant shot, please go find her and deliver that tetanus shot. So some of these things, if you go to the next slide, this is a sample of the forms that are being used on the phones. They're very, very low-end phones. Uh, these are probably about $40 phones that are provided to the nurses uh, because they have some capabilities that are able to ease the data entry burden. Going to what some of Peter's earlier comments were about the sustainability focus and the economic focus that Ravine brings to a lot of its work. We originally thought that we would just use the mobile phones that are currently in the nurses' pockets. About 95% of the nurses own their own mobile phone. It's usually a beat up old candy bar style mobile phone, but it's functional and can send text messages. And we thought the nurses would just simply send a text message in every time they saw a patient. Well, we quickly did the math and realized that given the volume of the patients they're going to see, uh, if they sent a message, a text message every time, the cost for those text messages over the course of about four or five months would pay for a new mobile phone. If they had a mobile phone, they could send information over the data network over the central SMS. So we decided to provide the nurses with mobile phones and come up with a replacement and damage policy for them. And as a result, they get a much better data entry experience and we think they will end up using the phones much more frequently. The service has been live in Ghana for about six weeks now. We've got 1,500 parents that are registered for the service in this very remote rural area of Northern Ghana. We have about oh, 4,000 total patients that are registered. And the goal is to spend about two years uh, overall, this project in the next year is going to really focus on the monitoring and evaluation piece. We're going to see what the health impact is. We are comparing this one region that's getting the mobile phone to another neighboring region which is not receiving the mobile phone. There are control groups who will have some very hard data about what the health, the differences in the health outcomes between those two regions. And if we can demonstrate success, we want to take the program national, so have it spread throughout the entire country of Ghana. So that's just one example of some of the mobile health work that we're doing specifically in Ghana. We started to realize actually that this work didn't need to be constrained to Ghana or really to pregnant parents. And so we're actually in the process now of taking the entire platform, and the software tools that we've built, and bringing them to India, where we're going to apply it to patients who currently have HIV AIDS. And when they would go to a clinic, there are some private clinics in India that serve people with AIDS, and they can register with them. And with your mobile phone, they will receive messages about when they should be taking their antiretroviral drugs. And they can also use the mobile phone to send in queries about symptoms that they might be experiencing. And we can help them understand whether or not that's a common side effect from the drugs that they're taking or whether or not it's uh, an issue that they really need to see a doctor for. We have some other work uh, that is outside of the health arena, specifically around getting people better information around agriculture. Uh, but it's along a similar theme. We're really trying to use the mobile phone as the access that the device that people are using for access and perhaps an agriculture specific discussion will be the topic of a future happy hour. So I'll end there and give people a chance to answer, ask a couple of questions uh, about other mobile health work or other stuff that's going on in the community. We can take a handful of questions and then just go back to drinking and socializing and the informal discussions. Yeah. You talked about taking the program And the question is whether or not we have the funding in place to take the program national. Green's funding specifically for the learning grant to validate that this is something that can be uh, have a positive health outcome in a specific region in Ghana. And the national program we're working now with the Ghana Health Service to validate the national level is successful. Part of the reason that we're focusing on the nurses is to help make them more efficient. And we think that the Ghana Health Service can actually save money by implementing this tool and get better information into their managers. Uh, and it's on the large sheet, it's very aggregated and patient specific information. So their, the whole health ecosystem can start being more efficient if they're using this technology. And we're just one of the sustainability models that we have. Thank you. Hi, Matt. How much overhead is there when you're trying to deploy, kind of, when you're trying to deploy the service to a new area, for instance, agriculture? And also, Uh, so the question is, how much hardwiring into a phone are we doing on the mobile phone side? Is it 
specifically on their agriculture, and can we go from easily from health to agriculture? On the pregnant parent side, there's nothing that gets installed on the phone. They just receive a message or a text. On the nurse side, there's a mobile application that they download on the phone that's health specific, but they can also just as easily download some agriculture specific forms or queries. And some of the agricultural work that we're doing in Uganda at the moment is using much more higher end devices, some Android phones in particular, and that's a much different experience and so that's also a very different business model. Uh, but we're deliberately experimenting with both high end phones and low end phones. A lot of the health or a lot of the agriculture work we do as well is actually using basic SMS or text messaging to do searchable text uh, databases. So you can actually send in a string and say something related to agriculture, I have this disease in the banana plant and you get answers back. So a lot of the focus has been to build up a variety of very, very strong content based, local content based related to agriculture. And uh, that specific part we work a lot with Google and with MTM, which is a large telecom provider over there, to make sure that we have good searchable text messages and good content for it. Yeah. I'm curious about your relationship or cooperation with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Yeah. I see a lot of, if not overlap, I see a lot of co uh, cooperative opportunity here. What is the relationship thus far? Yep. Well, specifically, the Mobile Health uh, Program in Ghana is Gates Foundation funded. So we've received funding from them, so there's clear overlap there. <laughs> uh, Gates Foundation has also uh, funded uh, some of our work in Uganda on the agriculture side. Uh, but a lot of the dynamics with Gates Foundation came as a result of some very early work that we did on its own. Uh, so we had a program that we called the Application Laboratory in Uganda, where we tried to figure out how people could really start to use information uh, with their mobile phones. And we did our first forays into health the program where you could send a freeform text to get sexual reproductive health information or a freeform text to get an answer to an agricultural disease question. And a lot of that work laid the foundation for our future projects that uh, want to be scaled to a much larger level of the gates. Let's do one more question and go back to the social um, You talk about how they actually download the application. Uh, what's the process of the process to having a website for them to access it? Yeah. Uh, so the reason that we download something onto the mobile phones is uh, that way you can have data that's on your phone without having real-time web connectivity. So out in these remote rural areas, it astonishes me that I can be in these rural areas and still call home and talk to my family or get access to the web, but that internet access can be very spotty and very sporadic. It goes down the trains, it goes down the, the, the power grid drops. So we wanted to have a solution where there is just be internet information on the mobile phones and have that stay on the phone and maybe upload it way out of the time for those kinds of things. Yeah. So I wanted to thank everybody for coming out. Hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to corner me, Peter, or anybody else with a little Grameen logo on the name tag if we've got other questions and we hope to see you. Uh,